so thanks for coming to see this. Uh, my name is John Pierce. I'm the LoRa product line manager at Microchip. And we're going to be talking about LoRaWAN, uh, which is uh, a wide area technology for IoT, and it's ready right now. So I was going to talk about a few things, set the scene with the IoT and the LP1 landscape, just a brief introduction, talk a little bit about the technology, but only very briefly as a short presentation, uh, mention the LoRa Alliance, which is uh, behind this technology, and then lead into some examples of real deployments. And actually, we have some of our friends here in the audience uh, who are rolling out networks for LoRaWAN right now. So to put it in context, uh, we have many, many different technologies for IoT. Uh, within our personal area networks, wearables, smartwatches, heart rate monitors, we have BT and NFC, these kind of technologies. Within our homes, coffee shops, offices, we have wireless LAN and Zigbee and other things. LoRaWAN is not trying to compete with those. Think outside the building, so into the smart cities, uh, beyond the cities in agriculture and highways and infrastructure. That's what we're talking about here with LP1. So LoRaWAN, this is a great slide. It makes me happy because it's colorful and nice, and it has a picture of a cow in the middle, which is our, our favorite application for LP1, is the IoT connected cow. It's become a little bit of a, a symbol for LoRa Alliance. We normally bring a full-size yellow cow with us to all our events, but we didn't have him today. But you can see from this diagram what this is we're talking about. It's like a GSM network. It's uh, an array of gateways feeding up to a cloud-based controller. And the red dots here are all of the end nodes, the applications for LoRaWAN. So a lot of applications for tracking things, whether it's shipping containers, people, children, Mura, the smart cow, uh, vehicles or the packages within the vehicles. Tracking is very strong. Also street lighting or traffic control, parking uh, is a good example. Uh, smart energy generation, wind turbines, solar, metering. Uh, all good applications uh, for LoRaWAN. We show a building there, uh, although I said think outside the building. On any building, there's uh, you know, water tanks on the roof and there's perimeter fences, which are normally outside of the range of other networks. So there is some connection. So uh, just to clear up terminology, there are uh, two names we talk about here. We talk about LoRa, the overriding technology, but really LoRa is the physical layer. Uh, it's a spread spectrum technology. Uh, it's what gives us very long range. We talk about range of up to 15 kilometers with LoRa. It's an incredible range for these kind of devices. Um, in urban areas, maybe it's a bit less. In, uh, in good line of sight, maybe it's a bit more. But 15 kilometers is a good starting point. Then there is LoRaWAN, which is the network protocol which sits on top of the physical layer. And this is what builds the large cellular network, the star network. Uh, and it's the property of the LoRa Alliance. So although I'm speaking as a microchip representative on the RS stand, uh, I'm also a marketing committee member of the LoRa Alliance. So I have some uh, discussion about that in my slides. So just to mention what the physical layer looks like and how we get the very, very long range, 15 kilometers. It's a spread spectrum technology. So you can see a, a screenshot of a spectrum analyzer showing a nice square Bart, Bart's head flat top uh, spread spectrum technology. It's not direct sequence spread spectrum like LTE. It's uh, a good old fashioned technology called Chirp FM. So you can see the bits are encoded by chirping the frequency. This is uh, frequency versus time. And we're chirping the frequency. Uh, knowing what those chirps look like, we can correlate for those uh, symbols in the receiver. And that's how we can pull the signal out of the noise. It gives you the long range and allows us to build this large network. Uh, that's the physical layer. Um, we're achieving the range by applying processing gain. So we have this ability to apply spreading factors. This diagram is showing a gateway in the center. And as we move our devices further and further away from the gateway, um, we switch from analog modulation to LoRa. And we start to apply longer and longer spreading factors. They give us a reducing sensitivity. The sensitivity gives us link budget. Link budget gives us range. So. That's one of the benefits of LoRa, is you can change the length of the spreading factor, you can send a packet short range, medium range, long range, as, they, as James demonstrated very well for us. Uh, so it's a, it's a very nice feature of the protocol. So um, that was the physical layer. Let's talk about the, the network layer. Uh, it's a bi-directional network. Uh, it's a large scale network. 
Um, to give you some round numbers, some key figures, we talk about low data rate applications, kilobit per second, something like this. Low duty cycle, uh, I've put 100 minutes, but think of things like meters that just need uh, slow updates or infrequent updates. It's very high capacity. We can have up to 10,000 nodes or even more on a single gateway. And very long battery life, so you can achieve uh, easily 10 year battery life applications. And as I said, this is the product of the LoRa Alliance uh, that generates and maintains and promotes the LoRaWAN technology. So uh, to mention the LoRa Alliance, it's a very, very fast growing alliance. Uh, Microchip was a founder member at Mobile World Congress uh, about 18 months ago. Um, this number's always wrong. I guess it's probably 500 uh, if I check today. Uh, and the list of icons uh, goes on and on and on uh, here. Uh, so the Alliance is trying to build an ecosystem to uh, standardize LP1 to enable all of these things that we have around us uh, to connect to the internet. Uh, it's made up of various committees, uh, strategic, marketing, a technical committee which generates the specification, and the certification committee which guarantees the interoperability, which is, is really key for this to scale up into a massive uh, trusted technology. Uh, the cert certification process is uh, coming online now. Uh, the microchip product was the first product to achieve certification uh, for Europe, and we're now going through the same uh, for the USA. Uh, and it's outsourced to independent suppliers to really uh, guarantee the interoperability. So I wanted to uh, finish really with just some examples of real deployments uh, because LoRaWAN, one of the other unique features is it's not prescribed what the business model is. The LoRa Alliance doesn't say you have to roll out a network one way or another. So it enables all sorts of different scales of deployments. So for makers, you can build a, a gateway yourself. This example is showing a Raspberry Pi connected to an IMST radio board. In fact, uh, you have one on the wall over here at RS stand uh, using a Raspberry Pi. So you can build this yourself. You can connect it to a, a free network server. You can get up and running for a few hundred dollars. Um, so it's really available to everyone. You could build uh, or you could buy a, uh, a single gateway system. Multitech is a great example of that. The Multitech uh, gateway actually has the network server built in. It actually has the application server built in as well. So if you want a one gateway network, it's fantastic. Then you may want to scale up to something bigger. So to build a campus sized network for you know, university, hospital, a shipping port. Uh, oh, I went the wrong way. Uh, there are uh, members of the Alliance selling that kind of service. You can buy the gateway, you put the gateway where you choose it, and they now move the network server from the gateway to the cloud. And so you can manage a scalable number of gateways, and that gives you a scalable uh, system. We have city-wide deployments. I'm from London, and we have a, a network in London run by Digital Catapult. Uh, this screenshot shows the first 10 gateways, but they're building a 50 gateway network to fill the, the orbital, the M25 uh, region of London. Uh, it's free to air and it's there to encourage uh, small to medium sized companies to come and build use cases and experiment on the network and uh, you know, drive the technology forward. Then there are nationwide uh, deployments. So there's a lot of telcos and operators deploying LoRaWAN as a national network. Some big names like Orange, KPN, Swisscom, uh, SK Telecom. Those are classic telcos who already have an M2M and a uh, GSM 3G LTE business. They're deploying LoRa for the, the low end, uh, for the low cost devices. Um, what I really like about this is there are new entrants uh, able to come into the market because it's in license free spectrum. Uh, we have our friends here. Lena from uh, Digimondo is a great example of a company who was not a telco before. Uh, but is now a telco, and uh, this is the, the German national network, which is in deployment now, uh, building, first of all, the major cities, and then expanding the network to densify the network and build national coverage. So if you're interested in joining a German network, come and see our friend Lena here. And then another nice feature is because it's license-free spectrum, you don't need to be constrained by borders as you would with GSM licenses and such things. So you can build a global deployment. 
Uh, a good example of this is the Things Network. Uh, one of their gateways is on the wall. Uh, the, the initiator of the Things Network, Finca, is, is here in the audience. Uh, and we're working very closely with Things Network uh, to enable um, an easier deployment. Uh, just this month, we should be launching together um, an open source gateway where Things Network is producing the open source base. Microchip is producing the certified radio module. Um, we're going to be shipping this this month, right? That's the, that's the plan. That's the plan. And this enables, that's a good segue to one of my favorite examples, uh, just to help you see what we're talking about here. Uh, is a real product. This is someone just going live to production now. Uh, this, well, can you guess what it is? Can anyone guess? Does anyone want to put their finger in there? James, you want to put your finger in there? I wouldn't put your finger in there, so uh, if I do that, did you hear that? That's, uh, that's a mousetrap. So I have here an IoT internet connected mousetrap. Uh, it has LoRa electronics in the base. It's something similar to this uh, kit we have here. Um, this is a three year uh, mousetrap. I'm told it's limited by the life of the spring, so they made a three-year battery life as well. And I think this is a perfect example of the low-end devices that you can connect to a network. This is connecting through the Things Network uh, to a monitoring portal. Uh, and this is real IoT really happening now. So that's my finishing point. Uh, we don't need to wait. Oh, I should show you the, the poor unfortunate mouse that we, we brought with us here. Um, this is happening now. Come and see us. We can show you the products, the solutions, the gateways, the networks, and all our partners are here. Um, and we'd be happy to tell you more. Thank you.